Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you. Well, I don't know how well the um, the audio is going to do tonight, but we trust that things will go better tonight than they did last night. Amen. And uh, we know the Lord is in control. Amen. Maybe it's that God wanted this message tonight. Um, last night, uh, Ukraine wasn't being invaded like it is tonight. So, um, again, we don't really know. Just because the news says one thing doesn't mean we really know what's going on. That's the truth, people. There's a lot of fabrication that goes on. There's a lot of things that go on with war games and uh, in the communication realm. So we don't really know what altogether is going on uh, in Ukraine or in Russia. We don't really know people. And we don't know what our news is telling us is even. So I felt that God would have us to share something with you tonight along the lines of rumors of war. Obviously, we're not going to focus on the war in Ukraine or with Russia, but we're going to focus on the scripture, and we're going to look at things from the perspective of the scripture. Amen. So we're going to open in prayer, and then we're going to get right into the scripture tonight, because of the late hour, and I don't mean just in the, <clears throat> in the natural, but spiritually. The hour is late. Amen. And uh, so we're just going to move right straight in to the scripture tonight. Uh, maybe in the future, if we may use, um, you know, maybe sing a few songs or something or one song or something before we go into the word. But um, I just feel like God would have us get straight uh, into the scripture tonight. Amen. So if you're here, amen, and uh, you can hear, uh, please just let us know in the chat that you can hear so we can hear it and make sure everybody is uh, able to hear the broadcast this evening. Amen. And vice versa, if, if you can't hear, you know, let somebody know. Amen. We have um, a team uh, member here that's uh, moderating, and so praise the Lord. Thank you for that, uh, believer now. We appreciate letting us know. Amen. Praise God. Well, I already feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. I already feel his presence. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this awesome opportunity that we have in this hour, Lord, to share truth. Lord, to share truth the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek or to the Gentile. We're not ashamed tonight, Father, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We know it is the power of God unto salvation. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, if somebody, Lord, is just thinking about checking out this broadcast right now. We pray you touch their heart and draw them by your spirit. Lord, we pray that those that are our regular listeners, that they will make their way to the broadcast this evening. You'll draw them by your spirit. Heavenly Father, we need your help and to deliver the things that you'd have us to share tonight. And Lord, that not only would it bring enlightenment and help your people to see where we are, but Lord, it would bring comfort to their hearts, knowing, Lord, that all these things must come to pass. But Lord, we know the end is not yet. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you'd anoint this service and have your way, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and get into the scripture this evening. It is getting late. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so we begin 
tonight in Mark chapter 13 and verse 5. Mark chapter 13 and verse 5. And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. Take heed. That's serious. He doesn't want us to be deceived. Amen? He's saying, take heed, pay attention, lest any man deceive you. And as I've already mentioned, there's a lot of deception concerning these, uh, concerning this war right now that's seemingly beginning in the Ukraine. So take heed, no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Did you hear that? shall deceive many, not few, many. And when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled. We need to hear this. This reminds me of when the Lord said, let your heart not be troubled. Amen. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. Right? So here the Lord is saying the same thing. He's saying, let not your heart be troubled. When you hear, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, be not troubled. For such things must needs be but the end is not yet how many know it's going to get much worse right it's going to get much worse sad to say but on the other side of that we should rejoice because the lord is going to set up his kingdom amen there's going to be an end to all war his kingdom shall be a kingdom of peace. Are you listening? Peace, folks. But before the kingdom of the Lord's reign and his peace, there's going to be war. It's going to get really bad on this earth. Amen. Listen, folks. Jesus said many shall come in his name. Now, there's two ways to look at this. There are those that are going to say they're Christ because he said many false Christ shall arise. But I'd like us to look at the other aspect of this. He said, many shall come in his name saying that he is Christ. Now, listen to me. Are we not in the hour? where many are saying that Jesus Christ is the Christ? Are there not many deceivers in the land that are saying Jesus Christ is the Christ? But they're deceiving people. Just because someone says Jesus is the Christ doesn't mean that they're of God, doesn't mean that they are preaching the true gospel. Amen? You know, <clears throat> Jesus said, many is going to say unto him on that day, Lord, Lord. Right? Many, many are going to say, Lord, Lord. So that tells me that it's not a matter of what they say with their mouths. It's what they say with their lives. Right? It's how they live. It's how they live. In fact, when the scripture speaks of holy conversation, 
it's not speaking of just the way someone speaks. It's talking about the way people live. Are you listening? And so there is many deceivers in the land today that are saying Jesus is the Christ and deceiving many. I believe with all my heart that we are in this time right now that Jesus told us of. Are you listening, people? For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. We've got to spend some time right here. Because, again, just because someone is saying all the right things, seemingly, does not mean that they're of God. It doesn't mean they're not a deceiver. I, I am amazed, really, how many false prophets, how many false teachers, how many deceivers are in the land today that are saying that Jesus Christ is the Christ. And there are those that are even saying he's the son of God. But Jesus said they're going to deceive many. And I believe we're in that time where many are going to be deceived because they don't follow the end of the conversation, the living of that minister. Anybody listening? Just recently, and I'm not going to mention any names, but just recently a minister just passed away. But people aren't following the end of his conversation, even though it's been said, it's been broadcasted all over the internet what kind of a life this individual was living before they died. And yet, they still preached him right into heaven. All your big name preachers were there and preached him right into heaven. Are you listening? We're in the greatest hour of deception, folks. I have to say this, too, is that oftentimes we think that it's, it's bad, right? It's, it's, it's really bad. Jesus has got to come any time now. It's, it's just getting so bad. But when you look in even the New Testament and you look at where Jesus was on the earth, we got to understand Jesus Christ, when he came into this world, it was just after or just at the end of the Dark Age. In fact, the Dark Ages, is he's the one that ended it because he said, I'm the light of the world. Amen. He said, they that sat in darkness saw a great light. He was the one that ended the, the darkness. He's the one that ended the Dark Ages. But Jesus, when he came into this world, he came into a very barbaric condition. Are you listening? The people were corrupt. And when I say the people, I don't mean the average people. I mean the leadership. Every, every, everybody was corrupt. All the leadership was corrupt. Even his own, uh, his own priests and his own uh, high priest, it was all corrupt. In fact, they're the ones that had Jesus crucified. They were supposed to be the most holy people. And yet they're the ones that kept egging the people on when they said, what should, when, when it was said, what should we do with your king, the king of the Jews? Crucify him. Away with him. And then the people began to chant what the elders and the, uh, the, the self-righteous priests and uh, the high priest and the, the Sanhedrin, what they are all saying Away with him. We have no king but Caesar. And so the people began to chant exactly what the leaders were chanting. Are you listening? And that's the danger in this hour, is these false ministers are getting the people to believe a lie. They're getting the people to believe that they are small gods or that they are Christ. Are you listening? Jesus said many Christs shall arise, false Christs shall arise and deceive many. And we're in that hour where 
we're at the time where there are ministers teaching the people that you're small gods. In fact, uh, when they start talking about I am or the power of I am, Jesus says right here, they're going to say, I am Christ. Well, they're already saying, I I, mean, I can't. Can you believe we're here? We're at the place now that Jesus told us of. I am Christ, right? They say, I am rich, right? They say, I am uh, wealthy. That's, those are the popular ones. I'm at peace. I have joy, you know, but the I ams, the, they call them, um, uh, what, what is it they call those? Affirmations, I guess they call them. And it seems today that affirmations are taking over the charismatic churches. Does anybody know what affirmations are? Affirmations came out of the Catholic Church. It, the Jesuits, that's, that's the Jesuits, affirmations. And this is what the church, the false church, is being given over to today, affirmations. And the scripture says in the book of Revelation, Jesus says, you say you're rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. See, that's an affirmation. They say, I'm rich. And notice the I am. They said, I am rich. There's the I am again. Jesus said they're going to say, I am Christ. Do you see what's happening today? It's really no different than what Satan did in the Old Testament went back in the garden, right? He tried to get Adam and Eve to believe they were God trying to get them to believe they were gods. That's the same deception that's going on today. And it's very, very subtle, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's very subtle. You won't see anybody coming out and just, you know, arrogantly saying, I am God very often. But if Satan could get them to believe this New Age teaching that we're all Christ's, we're all part of the collective, right? We're all part of the collective. We're all part of the Christ consciousness. That's the hour we are in right now. All oh, we're all part of the, the, the collective consciousness, the Christ consciousness. And this all is in the context of wars and rumors of wars. I don't know if you thought that we were going to talk about Ukraine and Russia tonight, but there's plenty of people talking about that. That's not my calling. That's not my job, brothers and sisters. My job is to help you to understand that the things that are being said today and the things that are going on today is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Amen. And Jesus said some things, and we should be very very alert and very aware of what Jesus said. We should care what Jesus had to say. Amen. Jesus said some things, and that should be important to us. Again, let's go ahead and read. What did Jesus say? This was not just a man. This was not just, um, this was not just one of the Christs or one of the ascended masters or one of the gods or no, this is the son of the living God. This is Christ, the one that hath, has no beginning and no ending, right? He's the alpha. He's the omega. He's the beginning. He's the ending. He's the first and he's the last. He has no beginning. He is the beginning. Amen. He is alpha. He is omega. And you and I, we have a place in between. Amen. We'll never be Alpha. We'll never be Omega. But we have a place in between if we want it. If we are willing to pay the price, the Lord said something to me the other day, and I'm going to share it with you. After preaching a message and I was dealing with the throne, the Lord spoke to me and he said, there's a place for you. He was speaking to me, and he said, there's a place for you. 
speaking of the throne. That doesn't mean that I'm going to ever arrive. Doesn't mean I'm ever going to sit with him in his throne. But there's a place for me. And brothers and sisters, there's not a day that goes by that it seems like maybe not a day that goes by where God, at some point throughout the day, I see the clock in the last two numbers are 24. And the Lord's just keeping that before me all the time about the 24 elders. Happens all the time to me. But just because God has made available for, for the overcomer to sit with him in his throne doesn't mean he's going to. There's no guarantee, brothers and sisters. There is absolutely no guarantee. We have to pay the price, right? We have to overcome even as he overcame. You can't be lukewarm and sit with Jesus Christ in his throne. Something that stood out to me this morning, the Lord was challenging my spirit with, is God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The word that really stood out to me is the word diligently. Now, I'll tell you, folks that are lukewarm, they're not interested in the word diligence. But if you're on fire for the Lord, amen, there's a place in your heart for diligence. It should excite you when Brother Joseph talks about diligence. There should be a burning inside of you. Remember what they said when they walked with Jesus, by the way? They said, did not our hearts burn within us as he opened to us the scriptures? Did not our hearts burn within us? When Brother Joseph mentions to you about being diligent, it should cause a burning in your heart. There should be a burning, amen, a burning desire to serve God like never before. That nothing, and I mean nothing, will get in the way of your relationship with the Lord. Amen. Oh, I feel his presence. I feel his presence. He is so good, people. He is so faithful. Praise the Lord. So in the context tonight of wars and rumors of wars, Jesus said, take heed. Do you think everybody today that's calling themselves a Christian is taking heed? No. This is a very loose generation, right? Do you think that everybody that calls himself a Christian today is... Um, the Bible says to gird up your loins. Do you, do you think everybody's girding up their loins? I don't think so. I don't think so. Do you, do you know the loins and, and girding up the loins, that's how every other part of the armor, the breastplate, that's how these parts of the armor stay attached. If you don't have the uh, the girding of the girdle, I guess you would call it. If you don't have that in place, these other parts fall off. Amen? So how can you have his righteousness? How can you have the breastplate of righteousness if you're not girded with truth? The other side of that is to loosen up. Right? When a soldier would come off the battlefield, they would loosen their girdle, right? At ease, no longer in the battle. But when they were in the battle, the girdle that they wore that held things together, it had to be in place and it had to be tight. Amen? And God is saying to you and I, brothers and sisters, gird up the mind, gird up the loins of your mind, gird up with truth. Praise the Lord. We are in a warfare, people. 
And this is no time to be loosening. This is no time to be loosening up. This is no time to be lukewarm. We're in a fight, brothers and sisters, and we're not fighting with flesh and blood. We're not wrestling with flesh and blood. And we're not even fighting with the devil. The fight of the believer, especially the overcomer, the fight that we have is the fight of faith. We're fighting to believe God. We're fighting to believe God, brothers and sisters, and it is a fight. We have a resistance against us, and it's unbelief, and it's doubt, and it's the fiery darts of the wicked, right? The devil is throwing fiery darts our way, trying to get us to doubt the Lord, trying to get us not to believe him. That's a warfare, amen? You and I cannot afford to take our guard down. We can't afford, amen, not to be walking by faith. That's our shield. When you walk by faith and not by sight, your shield is up. When you're not walking in faith, you're not protected. You're not safe, amen, from the fiery darts of the wicked. Let me tell you something. Fiery darts don't just come hurled at you and get just go out. A fiery dart was in the old time it was a it was an arrow that had a cloth wrapped around the end of it and dipped in a fuel. And they would light the end of it and they would shoot that arrow into the place that they were trying to conquer. Listen to me. They were hoping that the fire on the end of that arrow would catch a building on fire. Now, the buildings back then oftentimes were made of straw. Listen to me. And so when those fiery darts would come in, they would cause the whole area to be consumed in flames if they hit the right spot. Satan's not interested in shooting a fiery dart just to, just to annoy you. He's trying to consume you with lies and deception, and he's trying to discourage you, amen? And if he can get a fiery dart in, he can discourage you. He can cause you to be discouraged. I don't know how many times, brothers and sisters, where I felt discouraged, and I had to be reminded by the Holy Ghost, that's not real. You don't go by your feelings. I feel discouraged. Are you listening, people? Did you know your feelings can deceive you? Your feelings can deceive you. That's another way that Satan deceives us, is through our emotions and through our feelings. Aren't you glad that God's word is not a feeling? Now, that doesn't mean it won't produce a feeling, but it's not a feeling. Amen. The word of God is real. No matter what your feelings are telling you, his word will stand. Heaven and earth going to pass away, but his word is not going to pass away. You can put your trust in his word. Amen. What Jesus said right here in this context we're looking at right now, what he said in the context of wars and rumors of wars, it's going to come to pass. Everything Jesus ever said is going to come to pass if it hasn't already. He doesn't miss it. Amen. He's not a man that he should lie. The son of man that he repent. What he promised, he's well able to perform. Praise the Lord, people. So the Lord is telling us tonight to not be troubled. Praise God. Are you hearing his words? Are you receiving his comfort right now? Are you receiving that? I am. Can you hear what he's saying to you? Be ye not troubled. No matter what is said, if they were saying right now a nuclear weapon was headed for the United States, you and I should not be panicking. Be ye not troubled. 
even if we were nuked people and God was allow, allowed us to die in that, you know where you're going, right? Absent from the body and present with the Lord. Praise God. There should be no fear of death in the believer. We have the victory. Praise God. We have the victory. Jesus Christ conquered death, hell, and the grave. Amen? He, he's already defeated those things. He's already defeated that which is our enemy. Even Satan's been de defeated on our behalf. The scripture says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And what will he do? He'll overcome you. He'll devour you. No, he will flee from you. That doesn't sound like to me somebody we need to be worried about people. That doesn't sound like somebody to me that we need to be fearful and standing, you know, hiding in a corner. God's people today are so afraid of the devil. And really, it should be the other way around. If you're submitted to God and you're resisting the devil, he will flee from you, is what the scripture says. Satan's not going to devour you. He's not going to overcome you if you're submitted to God. Amen. If you're submitted to God, the Bible says he will flee from you. If you are submitted to God and you're resisting the devil. Oftentimes, God's people don't resist the devil. And they don't even submit themselves to God. So even if they tried to resist the devil, not submitted to God, what's going to happen? The devil's going to overcome them. The devil's going to devour them. And that's what's happening today. Many are being devoured by Satan, by his lies and deception, because they're not submitted to God. I hear them quoting that all the time. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. That's not what it says. It says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. That's the truth. Glory to God. That is the truth that will make you free. Amen. If you will submit yourself to God and resist the devil, he will flee from you, brothers and sisters. I don't know what you're facing right now. I know what Ukraine is facing. Who are they going to submit to for Russia to flee from them? The United States. Are you listening? We'll have to see. Is the United States going to be there to protect them? But I know if I submit myself to God and resist the devil, I know the truth. I know that Satan is going to flee from me. Why? Because Jesus Christ is bigger than the devil. Because God is bigger than the devil. Have you read the book of Revelation? Only one angel is going to bind the devil for a thousand years. One angel. And yet the scripture says Michael and the angels fought against uh, the dragon, Satan, and his angels. That's a lot of angels. And yet one angel is going to lay hold on the devil, bind him up with a chain, and lock him up for a thousand years. One angel. Amen. Oh, I feel God's presence, people. We're on the winning side, brothers and sisters. Amen. We're on the winning side. As I preached to you the other day, there's more on our side than there is theirs. There is more on our side than there is theirs. The whole hillside was full of the chariots of fire, the angels of God. Amen. We have got to walk in faith, brothers and sisters. He's already purchased. He's already paid the price for our victory. We can walk in victory today. Not one of us should be walking in defeat. Not one of us should be cowering down to the devil. Not one of us. If we understand what Jesus Christ has provided for us, the full armor of God has been purchased for us through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We can be clothed in the power of God, brothers and sisters. 
That's not just for them back there in Acts. Amen? That's for us today. We are to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We are to be clothed upon with power from on high. You and I are supposed to be overcomers in this hour, brothers and sisters. We're supposed to have more power than they did back there. Amen. We're not in the beginning, in the birthing of the church. We're in the end, brothers and sisters. And we should have more now than they had back there. They had the earnest of the inheritance. We have the fullness if we can receive receive it the earnest until the fullness praise God seems to me the Holy Ghost wants to remind us tonight that we're supposed to be overcomers no matter what the world's doing amen no matter what they're doing even with wars and rumors of wars and then verse 8 talks about nation rising against nation it's only going to get worse But in the midst of all of this, brothers and sisters, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Amen. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Praise God. Glory to the Lamb. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. How many know those that are around us today who you may, might meet in a supermarket or wherever you might meet somebody? Not everybody has faith. Not everybody's saved. Amen? You may come in contact with somebody that needs an encouraging word, someone that needs to know that there's a God in heaven that's on his throne. Amen? No matter what's going on on this planet. Comfort. That's what we're to offer. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, the Lord says. Speak comfortably to my people. Amen. There's enough negative going on today. We need comforting words. We need to be comforted. We need his peace. Amen. We need the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. We need that. We, we can't just say, oh, well, I'll take it or leave it. We need it. We've got to have the peace of God ruling our hearts. Let the peace of God rule your heart. Amen. That's, that's how we overcome when the, the world around us is in turmoil. The peace of God. Amen. When the storm is raging, And you and I are in the midst of the storm like Jesus on the sea. Peter was afraid and began to sink. Jesus wasn't afraid. Jesus wasn't worried. And you and I can walk with Jesus, praise God, in the middle of the storm. Hallelujah. But we can start sinking too, just like Peter, if we get our eyes on the problem. If we get our eyes on the storm. Amen. You can start listening to what they're saying about what's going on. This is going to lead to World War III. And, you know, you can say those things as long as you're saying them in truth. And you're not saying it as a fear monger. You're not trying to spread fear. You're not inspiring fear. You can say things in truth, but the world doesn't do that. The world are fear mongers, right? The media today, the news, it's all geared to fear. It's all about fear mongering. It makes their ratings go up. Amen. And so they love a bad story. They they don't like the good news. They like the bad news. They love to talk about the bad things going on in the world. Just look what they did with COVID. They loved it. They, they relished in it. It kept their, their, uh, their chant, their, their, uh, kept them on, on the air, kept the bills paid. Think about this. CNN, Fox News, all of them. They're really in business because Big Pharma pays the bills. That's That is who really is paying the bill for these big media companies. Did you know that? Big Pharma. 
Isn't it interesting that they're the very ones that were supposed to bring the solution to COVID? Isn't that interesting? Sounds like a conspiracy, doesn't it? Sounds like somebody's doing something possibly on purpose. Yeah. The Bible says the rich men of the earth, the great men of the earth, use sorcery to deceive the nations. That's what it says. Look it up yourself in the book of Revelation. They use sorcery to deceive the nations. Who was it that used the sorcery? It was the great men. It was the wealthy men. The Bible says it was the merchants that used sorcery to deceive the nations. And that's who pays the bills today. If you're not advertising for big pharma, if you're not selling big pharma, if you're not, you know, all these hospitals today, they're nothing but pimps, right? That's all they are. They're pushing the drugs for these big pharma companies. Are you listening? That's sorcery. That's mystery Babylon, people. The great men of the earth. They're the same ones that promote war, right? The Rothschilds, they've been promoting war all the way back. They're the ones that give out the loans to countries when they go to war. They're still doing it today. Amen. America's got their Federal Reserve right here in this country, and they're trying to put Federal Reserves all over the world. They're trying to put a central banking system in every country on the planet so they can control the whole world, a new world order. That's what's a, that's what they're doing. But America for years has already had that institution in, in, in our country. We're controlled by the Federal Reserve people, the bankers, the great men of the earth, right? The merchants, You'll never see Big Pharma go away, ever. If anything, it'll become greater and greater. And then those that support Big Pharma. That's really the elephant in the room. How many know that? Amen. How'd we get on this? I think God wants to move the remove the veil, people, and help us to see who really is pulling the strings behind the curtain. Amen? It is sorcery. That's what it is. And it's not just the United States. The whole world today is caught up in big pharma. They're all caught up in uh, drugs. And we know that's what always leads to the downfall of any country. Just getting people out of their minds and getting them all on drugs. Did you know Hitler kept his soldiers constantly drunk, constantly on drugs all the time? Oh, yeah. Kept them constantly, all the time, seduced, always under the influence of, of some kind of narcotic or some kind of... Some, some, kept them drunk all the time. They were out of their minds at all times. They were not in their right minds. They were demon-possessed. Amen? And at night, after killing people all day, they hit the, 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 the bars and, the, you know, they went and drank. They, they, it reminds me of the book in the Old Testament, the book of Daniel, drinking themselves drunk when the handwriting on the wall came. Amen? That's where we are today. The world today's getting into a drunken stupor. But what does God say to you and I? Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, he's going about seeking whom he may devour. The Bible says, submit yourself to God. Resist him. Resist him in the faith. It says he will flee from you. We're not to be drunken in this hour, people, with the cares of this life. Do we hear what the Holy Ghost is saying? We need to apply what's been provided us. Amen? That's what she did. That's what the bride did. She made herself ready. She applied what was provided. Amen? 
she provide she applied the truth to her life. Everything that was revealed to her, she applied it. That's how she overcame. Amen. And that's how we must overcome by applying the revelation of God's word to our lives. Amen. You can't just be a hearer of the word. You got to be a doer. Amen. And that's how you apply the truth is by doing it. By, by obeying it. Right. What you've heard tonight, if you leave here and you don't apply what you've heard, you're not a doer. You're just a hearer. And the scripture says, those that are hearers and not doers, it says you're deceiving yourself. It goes a little further and it says you're cheating yourself. Amen. So, we have a choice tonight. We can be lukewarm. We can be drunken with the cares of this life, right? We can be seduced. We can be overcome. We can be devoured by the devil. Or we can be sober, vigilant, right? We could be submitted to God, resisting the devil in this hour. We can be overcomers more than conquerors if we will do what Jesus says to do. Let not your heart be troubled. Be not troubled. If you're troubled right now, you're disobeying him. You ever look at it that way? If the Lord says, be not troubled, and you're still troubled, you're, you're disobeying him. Because he said, be not troubled. So why are you troubled? You're troubled because you're not obeying him. Because when you obey him, he gives you peace, right? He gives you calm in the storm. Amen. You know, when Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come unto, the, unto thee on the water. When he began to sink, do you know what he was doing? He was disobeying the Lord. The Lord said, come. And what did he do? He stopped coming to Jesus. That's what he did. We must obey the Lord. The previous message I was sharing with you, the Red Sea, you can't turn to the right or the left. You can't go back. We must go forward. God said to Moses, tell the people to go forward. Jesus set his face like a flint to die on that cross. He didn't shrink back. Amen. And he said, if any man will come after me, he must deny himself, take up his own cross daily. Amen. Jesus endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. Amen. You and I must do the same. We must endure to the end. They that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Are you enduring? Or are you getting weak and beginning to give in to the devil? Is he beating on your mind? Trying to get you to quit? Trying to get you to give in? That's what he does. But that's why the Lord has provided for us the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness. If you look at those parts of the armor, you understand that they are applied to certain areas of the man, right? They're applied to the mind. They're applied to the heart. They're applied, amen, to different parts. And we must apply that to our hearts and our lives before we can walk in it. But God has provided for us the full armor of God. And if you walk in unbelief and doubt, you, you don't have your shield of faith. 
you don't have the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts. I don't know what's being fired at Ukraine right now, but I know what the devil's trying to fire at you and I, and that's those fiery darts, amen? Do you know what those fiery darts are like, brothers and sisters? Those thoughts that come our way to get us to doubt God? Amen? Those fiery darts that that come our way, and if they stick, they get in, they can cause us to be consumed with a lie, consumed with fear, tormented with fear. Amen? There can't be any chinks in your armor. There cannot be any openings. There can't be any place in you where the devil can get in, people. And God Almighty has provided for you and I, and we need to understand what this means. He's provided for us the victory. Amen? Full salvation, complete deliverance, complete salvation. Not do our best. Right? Not where the chips may fall, where they may lay, or, you know. No. This is not hit and miss. This is a sure thing. If you obey him. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord helping us tonight to see from your perspective, Lord, that none of these things, Lord, move us. None of these things trouble us. And the end is not yet. We know these things must come to pass, Lord. But the end is not yet. Help us to realize, Lord, these things must be. These things must come to pass. And it's only going to get worse. But we know, Lord, we know that you're going to set up your kingdom, your kingdom of peace, and you shall reign in righteousness on this earth. And there's going to be those, Lord, that are going to reign with you in your kingdom. Ask, Father, that you will be with those that listen tonight and those that may listen later, Lord, that they will realize that you have provided everything we need to be overcomers in this hour. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb, people. Glory to the Lamb. The King is on his way. The king is on his way. Amen. Make straight his path. Amen. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. He's coming. He's coming. But he's not coming alone. He's coming with ten thousands of his saints. <laughs> Amen. Glory to the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. Every eye shall see him. Amen. Glory to God. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, folks, I trust you received something from the Lord tonight. Amen. I trust you've been blessed by God's word and that you've been encouraged by the truth. Amen. Not everyone has gone to sleep in this hour. Not every minister has sold out. Not every uh, preacher in this hour is a false prophet. Amen. Some of us have the word of the Lord. Amen. The world's going to laugh. They're going to mock. You know, they laughed and mocked at Noah. They laughed, they mocked Jesus as he, they were crucifying him. 
Amen. But the scripture says God's going to have the last laugh. Amen. But we got work to do. Amen. We're in the time of the harvest. We've got work to do. Praise the Lord. Share. Share this message and share the channel. Um, share the website with others. Amen. Do your part in getting the gospel out. Praise the Lord. And even if you want, get, use merch. HNN merch if you want to, if that's what you want to do. Um, it's up to you. Praise the Lord how you want to share the gospel. But we all have our part to do. Amen. Only what's done for Jesus Christ is going to matter. That's it. That's all that's going to matter is what's done for Jesus in the end. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, I hope that we, I, I don't know how, I'm just, these are baby steps for me. Um, using this platform, uh, it seemed to work out pretty good this evening. So, um, we'll see, we'll see going forward. Um, the way this works is we go live here and then Twitch will upload the video to YouTube afterwards. So even the folks that weren't here tonight live for the live service, they can hear later when it's uploaded to YouTube. Um, the, uh, it seems pretty good. Um, the whole time I've been in the, uh, the green, the whole time, I haven't dropped one frame, had no problems. So we thank the Lord for that. Um, praise God. Also, uh, there's a, a prayer wall on our website. If you need a uh, prayer, you can leave your prayers there. Also, you can leave your prayers in the chat area. Um, glory to God. Well, that's, that's about it for this evening. Uh, we will keep you informed uh, through newsletters and uh, through the community section on YouTube, just different ways where we'll keep you informed, future things we're doing. Um, but when we go live on here, you should get a notification if you've subscribed to this channel. Amen. I want to thank you for being with us tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. And good night.